Hello, everyone. Thank you for attending this webinar that will give you an overview about measurement, analysis, and improvement in ISO 9001-2015. My name is Carlos Pereira da Cruz, and I'm an author at 9001 Academy. I do quite a lot of ISO 9001 consulting and training, but also auditing as lead auditor. So today I'm going to share with you my thoughts about measurement, analysis, and improvement according to the ISO 9001-2015 standard. So my presentation will last approximately 40 minutes, after which we'll do a 20-minute question and answer session. If you would like to ask a question, you don't have to wait for the Q&A session. You can ask it during my presentation by writing it in the question pan in the GoToWebinar control panel. Of course, in the Q&A session, I'll also answer all of your remaining questions. You'll be able to download the presentation deck right away from your GoToWebinar control panel at the bottom of the handout session. Later, you will receive a link to the recording of this webinar. Oh, to talk about measurement and analysis because it is the basis for determining the effectiveness of a management system and the need for improvement. Because without improvement, a management system is most likely a burden. So we measure because there is uncertainty. Without uncertainty, there will be no need for measuring. And ISO 9001-2015 clause 9.1.1 is about what to measure, with what methods, when and by whom. A reliable measurement, <clears throat> measurement system is a tremendous input for good decision-making based on facts through analysis and evaluation. So ISO 9001-2015 clause 9.1.3 is about analysis and evaluation. And a sound measurement system is an important basis for improvement. Clause ISO 9001, 2015, uh, clause 10.2 and 10.3 uh, are about improvement. Clause 10.3 is about continual improvement based on trend analysis, for example. So, what is a management system without a proper improvement function in place? So imagine that you design the worst management system in the world. If the improvement function works, there is only one way, becoming better. Now imagine that you design the best management system in the world. If the improvement function is not working, and as the context is constantly changing, there is only one way the deterioration, the erosion of the management system effectiveness. So realizing that improvement is not a priority really impresses me. Okay, if you are implementing, I understand your priority, but if your organization is already certified, what is your priority? So just keeping the certificate? In this webinar, I will try to share with you my passion and some tools about methods, to develop the improvement function in your organization. But first, let's see the agenda for today. So this is the agenda. First, we will see what <clears throat> really is quality improvement. Then we will answer the question about what to measure. Deciding what to measure is just the first step. When to measure, who measures, what is the desired performance, so we have to plan the measurement and analysis. So, okay, we measured, we have the data, how to present it, that's the next step topic. So how to analyze and evaluate? What is the improvement journey? What tools can be used in our improvement efforts? And what can be the itinerary, the road to follow? And at the end, uh, we'll speak about the main challenges according to the email that I received from you. Now, before starting this webinar, I would like to know where do you want me to focus? So please answer to this poll, okay? Thank you. So which topics would you like this webinar to focus on? So about what is quality improvement, planning what to measure, 
So presenting analysis and evaluation or the improvement journey. Hmm. Okay. Thank you very much for your participation. Okay. Now, let us see the results. Okay, so, oh, planning what to measure, 69%. Okay, analysis and evaluation, 67%. So this, these ones are the most relevant, so about the planning and about analysis and evaluation. Then comes presenting data, 38%. Then the improvement journey, okay, 30%. And what is the qual or what is what really is quality improvement? 28%. Okay, okay. Thank you very much. Um, let's go. Let us start. Hmm. Okay. So about this, uh, what is quality improvement? So. Let us see things like this. So we plan our operations will work. Hmm? Then operations begin. And we start uh, with quality control during operations. So some days are good, some days are not so good. And if we start monitoring uh, the evolution of a particular indicator, like uh, for example, defect rate, um, we realize that there is a particular level of chronic waste hmm, embedded in the way we work and we get used to it. And I like to, to stress that and we get used to it. Okay. Occasionally, well, in certain organizations, frequently there is a kind of a sporadic spike that makes the bells ring all over the organization. So it is when the CAO a hundred of kilometers away, phones the business unit responsible and starts yelling, what are you doing to solve the situation, okay? How long to get back into normal? You know, all cameras from tabloid TV are fixed in your organization. Time is running. You know, you, 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 you can hear tic-tac, tic-tac, tic-tac. So will, will they solve the problem? How long to solve the problem? Who will be sacked? How much is the organization losing? And then the problem is solved and we get back to our familiar chronic waste level. Now, attention, solving sporadic spikes is very, very important, but it is not quality improvement, okay? Quality improvement happens when we decide to reduce or eliminate the probability of that, of that sporadic spike from happening again, okay, clause 10.2, or more commonly, when we decide to change the status quo and reduce the chronic waste level. Now, that is clause 10.3 from ISO um, 9001 2015. Okay, this is a, a based on a picture from Joseph Duran. Okay, um, and I like this one very much because normally we think that improvement is solving sporadic spikes. No, improvement is about changing the status quo, reducing the chronic waste, okay? And uh, now, let's see. So, um, now, when do we decide to improve? Hmm? So, uh, we have a standard. The S there is for standard. Standard here means a procedure, written or not written. We have a, a, our current way of doing things, okay? Our standard way of doing things. So, we follow that standard and we check the results and we decide how to act. When everything is as usual, we decide to keep the standard. The standard is useful, okay? So when a non-conformity happens, we treat the non-conformity. After confirming that, th that it was closed, hmm, we ask, should we improve if the answer is no, we keep the standard. Mm -hmm. But when the answer is yes, we start the improvement cycle, the PDCA cycle. We plan an experiment about changing the way all things are done. We do the experiment, we check the results, and we decide how to act. 
And if the results are not okay, okay, we will continue in the PDCA cycle. We have to try again another experiment. But if the results are okay, we go back to the SCCA cycle. We update our standard according to the new, the new practice, the new procedure, the new way of doing things. So this event-based improvement is initiated by a non-conformity. It is about clause 10.2 and behind, behind it, uh, that is clause 8.7, okay? So this is the everyday level. Mm -hmm. However, even if our decision after an event, after a non-conformity is to not improve periodically, we should prepare a performance report. We should monitor and measure, so according to clause 9.1.1, and we should analyze and evaluate according to clause 9.1.3. And again, we ask, should we improve? Now, not based on an event, but based on a trend analysis, but based on a set. Should we imp mm, improve? If the answer is no, okay, case closed. But if the answer is yes, we are starting a calendar-based improvement and this is about clause 10.3 continual improvement typically um, performance reports are about quality objectives and process performance mm -hmm. so think about this do you have improvement uh, requests mm -hmm. do you have corrective action requests um, in your qms what is the rate of number of event based improvement requests over number of calendar-based improvement requests. Trust me, there are much more improvement opportunities among the chronic waste, but normally we are used to that chronic waste, okay? Now, I have here a link for an article that I will uh, put here, and you can check it um, later in the, in the chat box. So the article is, Hydro 9001, difference between correction and corrective action, okay? Two different things. Mm -hmm. And I have here two questions. One question is from Yvonne. How can I time measurement, analysis, and improvement according to ISO 9001-2015 to the work of a performance improvement committee or team? So, uh, Yvonne, I believe this slide can help in answering your question, okay? So a performance improvement committee or team can be extremely important to drive a calendar-based improvement logic focused on chronic waste reduction, okay? So it's, it's a team that will look into the, that periodically uh, performance report and make decisions about improvement. Another question is from Sarah Varna Bavan. Are the measurement analysis and improvement need to be implemented as a whole to the facility or at the department level? Um, so ISO 9001-2015 does not mention department, hmm? only processes, okay? So two different things. Hmm? Measurement analysis and improvement can be implemented at the facility level, for example, about quality or business objectives, and at the process level, I recommend working at both levels, uh, particularly, let us say so, because of what is called the emergence property of system. A system is more than the sum of its parts. Mm -hmm. So if we only do, if we only measure perf process performance, perhaps we are missing here something about this emergence uh, property, okay? Now, let's go to the next slide about uh, choosing what to measure. Mm -hmm. So, and we start with this, we start the planning, the planning part. Um, so, of course, one cannot forget that quality objectives must be aligned with the quality policy. So, if the quality policy of an organization has a general commitment uh, to be known in the market as an innovative company, then um, a quality objective can be percentage of sales of new products. Normally, prior to this webinar, I receive questions about how to pick the right quality objectives. 
for profit or non-profit organizations start from your relevant interested parties strategy is about where to focus to serve their needs and expectations so one can simplify strategic orientations into three main types so what do you promise to your customers is it low price is it service or customization is it innovation or design so if your orientation is low price perhaps quality objectives should focus on defects costs and delivery so what i learned with with um, Mazahaki Myers, the TCD, quality, cost, and delivery. But if your uh, orientation is service, quality objectives perhaps could focus on defects, uh, sorry, on flexibility, speed, and satisfaction. But if your, your orientation is innovation, uh, perhaps quality objectives should focus on speed to market, sales success of new products or services, and margins. Hmm? Um, so about this topic, I uh, leave here three links. Um, one link is uh, practical tips for measuring your QMS according to ISO 9001-2015 clause 9.1. Uh, the other link is how to write good quality objectives. And a third link is how to define key performance indicators for a QMS based on ISO 9001. Okay. Now, so this is about uh, quality objectives. Now let's see the, the, the objectives, not uh, about, but about, um, or indicators about processes. Okay, so uh, about process indicators, I consider three types of indicators. About effectiveness, so the ability to meet the process purpose. About efficiency, so concerning the use of resources. And about quantity, the amount processed by the process. For example, consider um, the amount of calls processed by a call center. The more the calls in, the more call center operators are needed, or quality of service will decay. So, choosing process performance indicators is much easier and useful when we consider the process purpose as reference. Okay, but attention, many organizations don't determine the purpose of the process they determine or they write the purpose of the document that describes the process, okay? So consider a process, for example, manufacture parts. And you ask, why do we have this process? Hmm? Okay, we have this process to comply with the production plan. So we want to respect the production plan without defect and at budgeted cost. Um, okay, so, um, how will you know that the purpose is being met? So one way of measuring performance is at macro level, measuring purpose, uh, pur purpose effectiveness. So for this case, indicators can be production plan compliance rate, um, defect rate, and deviation from budget or unitary cost. See how each promise from uh, the in the purpose statement is translated into a metric that can be used to evaluate performance according to the promise. Hmm? So I like to do this um, all the time. So this, for me, the effectiveness indicators are the most important. Of course, efficiency indicators are important. And then come the, 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 the and sometimes I use also uh, quantity indicators. Um, I like a lot uh, of using indicators. My problem is, uh, I need to cut because too much indicators will be, maybe start becoming noise, okay? Um, so I have much more information about this relationship between indicators and processes in the um, webinar about the process approach, okay? You can, you can check it at the Advisera site uh, about this. Okay, one question here is, whoa, it's a question with, uh, with several, lines okay question from s do you need each process in the business to be measured or it could be high level oh yes each process should be measured okay clause 4.4.1 c okay um second question how many kpi should each process have and 
each process must have at least one indicator. Okay, um, one indicator. And uh, do you change these KPIs, uh, indicators, every year? Mm, then we will need to revise analysis of data work instruction each year. Okay, for example, from the slide, so in this slide, let us consider the indicator defect rate. So while doing management review, so clause 9.3.2C5, we may question if the indicator is still useful, if the frequency of measurement is still suitable, and if we need to change the target, the aim performance. So your organization must answer yes or no to each one of these topics. So normally we may need to improve, so establish more demanding targets. Not so common to change indicators every year. Okay. Sometimes perhaps we need, we, we think it's better, but not, not every year we, we, we change uh, indicators, uh, even because it is important to have some kind of trend analysis. There's some historical data to see how things go in the, in the, in, in the long term. And the last question how does business defines quality goals and objectives and business goals and objectives okay how does business defines quality goals and objectives and business goals and objectives so oh, i don't know if i'm understanding your question so quality goals and objectives may coincide with some business goals and objectives so that will depend if those quality goals and objectives are critical to implement a particular strategy uh, I will answer uh, another question later on the Q&A about this topic, okay? Uh, so defect rate may be part of a quality goals and objectives. However, it is, um, if it is from an organization that sells, let's say, a luxury product hmm, or service, defect rate is not, uh, I don't believe it will be uh, business goals and objectives. Hmm? Business goals and objectives are critical to execute a particular strategy and satisfy target customers okay now now okay so we choose what to measure now let's see the plan so comes after defining what to measure comes planning so for each indicator or objective an organization must plan how will monitor performance so planning requires definition of what to measure so what are the indicators to follow? What is the specification, the border between the acceptable and the abnormal, the uh, unacceptable? Then, when to measure? Monthly and quarterly are the more common. Um, so the lower the frequency, the less feedback. Hmm? The less the feedback, the less the opportunities for doing something to change course if needed. Hmm? Then, who is responsible for measuring? Sometimes it is recommended to set the formula to calculate the indicator. For example, um, what is downtime? What is included in that indicator? Where are the sources? Then, who analyzes the data and makes decisions? And are the indicators reported to someone? Communication is very important as a way of involving, fomenting learning and know-how among employees. Okay, um, I worked uh, uh, I worked in a in a in a Japanese company, um, and uh, as as the Japanese tradition, we had to, when we we started in the in the company, we worked as operators. It was a chemical company, so we worked as operators in the in the production shop floor. And when I when I became the quality manager, my first decision was to uh, send more information about quality performance, um, so about the product, all the topics about the the the, 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 dis the distribution of uh, of the the data, the specification data about the um, every day in the production about the product. For my idea was to help people to get more insights about cause effect relationships because i as operator i didn't know if i if i do this or if i do that will that be different in the product hmm? so uh, i leave here th uh, four links okay um 
One is about making the best, is an article about title, making the best out of ISO 9001 quality plan. Another one is another article, analysis of measuring and monitoring requirements in ISO uh, 9001-2015. And uh, links for um, a document template from our toolkit, the data analysis report and also a link for the ISO 9001-2015 documentation toolkit from uh, Advisor Lab. Uh, so I don't have here, I don't, will not show you the, the, the data analysis report, but I will show you from the toolkit an example here um, of the, the matrix of key performance indicators. So I put here an example. So process order and materials for, and then the process and process owner. The owners, let's consider one here, defect rate, um, the aimed value, so our target, less than 0.8%. The tolerance limit, we want to be less than 1%. So above that is very, very bad. Um, measuring frequency, will do the where is this recorded? Where is this appears? Uh, this indicator. So you can you can use this kind of um, uh, um, matrix of key performance indicators. Okay, back to to our uh, our presentation. So okay, we plan hmm? we plan what to measure, and now what we have is okay. So um, now we we start measuring. We have the data. Now comes presenting data. And what I have here are some warnings, okay? So about the five most common mistakes while presenting data. Um, okay, so presenting only the last result makes it difficult to determine trends over time, and many organizations do this. Huh? For most performance measures, it is important to look at changes in trends over time. So, and what I see many software using this kind of gorgeous, dial gorgeous, and we cannot see. We only see the last result. We, we it's like uh, we see the 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 um, instantaneous, hmm? as I say, so um, performance, but we don't see the, the 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 trend. We don't see the evolution. Okay. Uh, most organizations waste a lot of time, a lot of time deciphering um, hard to read tables looking to find some hidden messages. Tables are good to give precise numbers, but are very bad to show trends and easily become boring and make people, make people fall asleep. So a graph is always a better way of presenting data. Graphs also typically provide information on levels, trends, and variability. Information more difficult to pull out of a table of numbers. So you can investigate a table of numbers and get nothing, and then plot them in a graphic and easily realize a trend. Okay, um, a practice that is is extremely um, prevalent is to report data with data without any goals or comparative statistics. So data without a goal or comparison are meaningless. Even if managers and staff members are expected to know goals and desired levels of performance for each indicator, it is still helpful to have this information on the graph for reference. When I don't see the, the target, I, I think it, this is on purpose, okay? I think they do this on purpose to hide something. Um, again, more, um, the information must fit on a single screen. Mm -hmm entirely available within the viewer's eye span so it can all be seen at once at a glance okay you must if you must scroll around to see all the information it has transgressed the boundaries of a dashboard if you must shift from screen to screen to see it all you've made use of multiple dashboards the object is to have the most important information readily and effortlessly available so you can quickly observe what you need to know. I know, I know the experience. The first time I used uh, a dashboard, we used several dashboards, and it was interesting because we were seeing dashboard number four, and we already forgot what was in dashboard number one to make connections between the different performance of indicators. And I remember thinking that, oh, this is a, my problem. Um, I cannot remember. And then I started reading books about this, 
uh, from a specialist, people that think about uh, this presentation and dashboard, and I realized it's not my problem, it's a human, it's our human uh, problem, okay? Human species problem. So something powerful happens when you see things together all within eye span. You are able to make comparisons, spot relationships, and see the big picture. Uh, so also avoid useless decoration. Mm? People either hope that we will be drawn in by the artistry or assume that the decorative flourishes are necessary to keep us entertained. I assure you, however, that even people who enjoy the decoration mm -hmm. upon first sight will grow weary of it in a short time. Using too many colors is a common problem, especially bright colors, because dashboards are often densely packed with information, the visual content must be kept as simple as possible. Using of too many colors can be visually assaulting. So as a rule of thumb, use this one. Without losing information, a graph with less ink is more user-friendly, is more effective. Now, as a last uh, uh, message about this topic of presenting, search these keywords. Okay, spark lines, hmm? a very simple graphic, uh, bullet charts a co to compare current performance and target, and um, individual um, statistical process control. Okay, um, now I would like to know a little bit about your experience with presenting data. So, which mi mistakes do you see more often? So, please answer to these four. Hmm? So what do you think are the most common mistakes? Presenting only the last results, only numbers in tables, uh, results without a target, several dashboards instead of just one, using too much ink and color. Okay. So um, let's see. Uh, results. I'm curious about this because I love a lot this topic about presentation of data. <clears throat> Presenting results without a target. Okay. Whoa. Okay. Uh, Sixty-one percent. Remember what I said. Mm, when I see this, I start thinking. Hmm, they want to hide something. Mm? So it's like um, when I see um, only average and not seeing um, the um, distribution, so the statistical variation. Ah, also mm, a warning sign. So using several dashboards instead of just one, 45%. Okay. Presenting only the last result, 45%. Uh, presenting only numbers in tables, 42%, okay, and using too much ink and color, 26%. Thank you very much for your feedback. Okay, now let's go to uh, analysis. So we measured, we present data. What we do with this, we, okay, we will make the analysis and evaluation. So. Let us consider an example of an indicator with a bad performance. So in the last 12 months, the number of complaints had been higher than the target. You can see here, number of complaints per month, last 12 months, so the, the spark line, uh, the status, uh, it's bad, target less than three, current value four, year to date, so the average of the last 12 months, 4.4. Um, so, uh, so things are not going well. So how important is the number of complaints? What are the actual or potential consequences? Lost customers, lost reputation, lost productivity, costs, legal complications? If we don't do nothing, uh, will performance improve? Just look into the trend chart. So what is the probability of this happening? High, medium, low? So, we are talking about risk, you see? Consequences and probability. Most of the time people use this to, to, to classify, to evaluate risks in the organization. Um, so we are talking about risk. 
if the risk is high, we need to change. So there's a go decision. During analysis and evaluation, we normally don't decide what needs to be done, what needs to be done. We normally don't know, okay? Uh, because there's a lot of fog. Root causes are almost always hidden under several layers like in an onion. So what we do is we decide that we need to improve. Mm -hmm. So it is wise to raise an improvement action demand, a, co a corrective action demand. So something like reduce the number of complaints per month. All complaints? By how much? What is the time frame? One, two years? One, two days? One month? So how do you eat a big elephant? You cut it in small slices. So we can do a Pareto chart of all reasons of complaint. You see, oh, more than 30% of all complaints are about design deficiencies. Okay, uh, can we um, go deeper? What kind of design deficiencies? Oh, okay, so now the improvement action request is reduce the number of complaints concerning reason A. Hmm? So the, the, the most important reason behind design deficiency. Um, why did it happen? Do we know the causes? No, perhaps, or yes. Some uncertainty. So the action is a structured improvement action when risk is high depending on knowing what needs to be done and what are the causes behind the event or trend. So normally we don't know the causes, so we will have to, to, to look for the causes. But in analysis and evaluation is about this, is about um, looking into the results and when there is a, a, a red flag, we ask what are the actual or potential consequences? What is the probability of recurrence? Should we improve? Okay, if we decide to improve, do you know what needs to be done? Sometimes yes, most of the time no, because you know, uh, we are not speaking here about sporadic spikes. We are speaking here about the chronic waste level, the things that are older than us in the company. So when we arrived at the company, those, those, stop, those things were already happened. So they are part of the, of the organization. We consider them, okay, it's normal to have three, four complaints per month. Oh, okay. Uh, think like that. Okay. So about this topic, uh, mm, mm, mm. I leave here a link to um, how to uh, an article called "How to Implement the Check Phase mm -hmm. Performance Evaluation in the QMS According to ISO 9001 2015." Oops, time is running. I must uh, now. Okay, we decided to, with analysis and evaluation, we decided to we give the goal decision. We decided, let's go, let's, let's try to improve, and, but we don't know the causes. Okay, so what we need to do, we need to embark in the journey of improvement. So, uh, decide who will lead the project, explain why, for example, using, um, using charts, using statistical process control or just graphics will be important to show the importance, the context, explain why we need to improve, show the importance, show the pain for the organization, show the potential benefit. Then uh, the improvement team should study the current situation, uh, use tools like Pareto charts, histograms, and flowcharts. Um, these tools are amazing. Mm. Um, I hope you, you use them because they are really amazing. Then set improvement targets, the desired outcome and success metrics. Later, we'll help evaluate effectiveness of actions. Now, find the root cause or causes behind the challenge. Ask the five whys, use the fishbone diagram, for example, or check sheets and look for correlations, for example. Okay, so about this, uh, leave here link for two articles. One is how to use quality control tools to improve your QMS. And another one is about the use of the five whys. So um, use the root cause analysis to support corrective actions in your QMS. Okay, now mm -hmm. let's continue the journey. Okay. Um, determine 
when we find the root cause, we determine alternative countermeasure, possible solutions, um, choose a solution, plan implementation, who will do what until when, what resources are needed, then check implementation, report results, evaluate effectiveness. So compare with the, the set targets. Hmm? Um, if okay, return to the SDA cycle and standardize or modify the standards that you have. And okay. Um, what can go wrong when this is implemented in an organization? Okay, my experience. Is there a calendar for analysis and evaluation? Hmm. Are performance targets set? Um, do we believe that improvement is about changing the system and not about blaming people? Who is leading the improvement journey? What kind of training do you provide to people participating in the improvement team? Uh, it's, it's easy to see people that receive a corrective action request and have no training about how to fill the how to fill the, the, the form, how to use um, tools to um, determine the current situation or to do the root cause analysis. Um, so what kind of training do you provide to people participating in the improvement journey? What kind? The, um, so when we do this, when people don't have training, they start defending themselves and their people. They mix motives with causes. They don't use improvement tools. They don't test hypotheses. They don't do any follow-up. Um, and for example, top management doesn't follow up. Top management doesn't celebrate success. If we have a success, should, we should celebrate to start, mm, to start putting in the minds of the people that we can do it. We can, we can improve. Huh? And this will, next improvement project will be much better. Okay, okay a question here from uh, Matt. What is the difference between root cause, corrective action activities, and improvement? Okay, um, an effective corrective action generates uh, improvement, and root cause determination is an important step in any improvement action, corrective or preventive. I, I think I skipped this. All right, so um, now let's go to the... Hmm. So based on um, based on uh, emails that I received from from you um, before this webinar, uh, these are I believe the, the main challenges. So selecting the right indicators, um, alignment with strategy, uh, identifying improvement opportunities, and tools for uh, improvement. So uh, about selecting the right indicators, just one or two things. So the importance about uh, uh, they are linked, when we talk about uh, quality objectives, about they are aligned with the quality policy. Um, and oh, when they are about uh, processes, think about the, um, the purpose of the processes, okay? Um, about the alignment with strategy, uh, think about who are your uh, target customers, mm, the customers that you are uh, serving above, above all. Uh, think about what is your competitive advantage? Hmm? Um, about identifying improvement opportunities, think about the chronic waste. Hmm? Our attention most of the time is for the sporadic spike. You know, the televisions are there, the, the, the tabloids are there, uh, the, 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 the watch is ticking, the clock is ticking, uh, but think there's more improvement opportunities more return from improvement opportunities when we um, look into the chronic waste and about tools for improvement okay think about those those tools uh, that uh, i just showed like the pareto chart the, um, the the flow chart the the five whys they are really important but they and, and there's a step hmm, where they are they are more relevant okay we don't use the pareto chart to 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 find the root cause, for example, and we don't use the the five whys to determine the context of the of the, um, the importance of the um, of the challenge of the problem. Okay, um, now 
I will I will ask what is your uh, um, concerning your situation right now. What are in these challenges for you? What seems to be the most important? This is the last the last poll that I will uh, ask you. So, what do you think are the biggest challenges when thinking about QMS measurement? Selecting the right indicators, alignment with strategy, identifying the improvement opportunities or tools for improvement. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Now let's see the results. Oh, I'm. Hmm. Okay, selecting the right indicators, 63%. Okay, then alignment with strategy, 40%. Identify improved opportunities 38% and tools for 38%. Okay. Again, um, if you remember, check the, the, the webinar about the, the process approach. Perhaps it could be relevant to because I present there several uh, examples about uh, picking the indicators for effectiveness, for efficiency, for quantity. Okay, and how to use, for example, the flow chart. The, the process flow of the, pro, the in the process to determine, uh, for example, um, uh, efficiency indicators. Okay. Thank you very much for your participation. Let's go to the conclusion. I'm uh, the the my clock here is ticking because it's too much. I, it's already I should be already in the Q and A. Sorry for that. Um, but problem is that I like this topic a lot. Okay, conclusion, it's this, okay, measurement and analysis should be aided by proper tools to present the data and proper tools to help analyze the data. Oh, this morning, I, I, I was work, uh, work, uh, working with an organization at the end, I inquired if they ever used um, the, 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 the statistical process control. Um, okay, when we don't use statistical process control, some kind of schizophrenic, okay, sometimes things are good in the other day things are very bad and we don't have any criteria for deciding when to act eh? um, so mm, good proper tools to help to analyze the data are very important measurement and analysis only tell us if there is an opportunity to improve then don't tell us what to change to improve okay that's the, the when we decide that improvement journey mm -hmm. we there when we do step by step we study the 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 the, the, the challenge and improvement is of paramount importance. The context is always changing and interested parties become more demanding. It's, it's as I said before, even if you had implemented, have implemented the best management system in the world, because the context is always changing and interested parties become more demanding uh, or change opinion, okay, you need to change your system. You need to improve your management system. Okay. Now, okay, so um, what do we have here? So I wrote a book with practical examples of application of ISO 9001-2015 to a company. Perhaps it could be useful for you uh, and your colleagues. So I leave here the, the, the link for the Discover ISO 9001 through practical examples. Um, if you are a beginner, and want to learn more about ISO 9001, perhaps the ISO Foundation's online course could be interesting for you. You can watch the whole course for free. Um, and if you, are, if you have more experience, perhaps the lead implementer course could be an help for a next step. So the same, the free online course also, you can, you can watch, the, watch the whole course uh, for free. So um, now, before we begin with the question and answer session, just to mention that you can ask me anything about ISO 9001 directly, just send me an email and I'll answer as quick as I can. If you have uh, to leave before this Q&A session is over, please do fill in the short survey that will open right after you leave the webinar. Okay, let's see. Uh, you know, I love your questions because they are not theoretical questions, they are practitioner questions. So, question from Antonio, uh, to show improvement, is it mandatory to use KPIs? Those KPIs must be documented 
so to show improvement, um, we need to have some kind of indicators. I don't like to use the, the term KPIs because, um, okay, KPIs are key, so process indicators, so uh, very important indicators, but uh, we can use other indicators or indicators that are not key but are relevant for the organization in terms of operational terms, for example. Uh, I like to use the example of an organization may have no problems of capacity, so uh, they um, they don't consider as key process indicators, indicator for about maintenance, but we have a budget in the maintenance with maintenance, uh, so we want to know if our budget is well uh, applied. So we may have perhaps the the indicators about downtime or things like that are they may be not key, but they are relevant in terms of operational to know if we are doing our maintenance um, uh, if our maintenance is effective in some way. Okay, uh, if those KPIs must be documented, yes, we must have some kind of um, evidence of so what documentation is that. So it's more about in, um, the, the records that we have, okay, the, the records uh, that we need, uh, not so much documents in terms of um, uh, like, like a procedure, but the records that uh, illustrate evidence what are our indicators. Um, okay, question from uh, Nicolas. Uh, I picked continuous improvement of the QMS as an objective. How can I measure it? So I picked continuous improvement of the QMS as an objective. How can I measure it? So uh, you must, you first, you must uh, define, establish how you can measure uh, continuous improvement of the QMS. Well, for example, um, you can decide that uh, your uh, continuous, impro continuous improvement or continual improvement of the QMS is effective if you um, have at least one, one um, well succeeded uh, improvement project um, per quarterly or per month or okay or, but you must first de define that okay. Um, or for example, if you um, every year, even if you uh, keep the same indicators, let us imagine that at least uh, um, you uh, improve or you are more demanding in the targets for half of the indicators. And you say, okay, uh, I, uh, our continual improvement is working if we are able to at least 60% uh, of our uh, indicators or in, that were improved, we can achieve them, you can meet them, for example. Hmm? Uh, how, question from Christopher, how do you determine indicators? So, uh, how do you determine indicators? So, I uh, I already gave the ex some examples of doing that, so uh, perhaps the question was made before I presented the, the slides about that. Okay, so Christopher, if you have more doubts about this topic, please, uh, please, you can, I, I, I invite you to make another question, okay? Um, oh, question from Julius. How does a typical engineering service company in the oil and gas industry apply QMS to their process in order to measure and analyze quality for customer satisfaction? Oh, it's a very specific uh, question. I don't have experience in oil and gas industry, but I would use, I would start with, for any industry, I would start with customer satisfaction. So, who is your target customer? Normally, organizations consider, uh, and for me, that's one of the things that I don't, that I don't, uh, um, no, it's not that I don't like, or I think it's, it's incomplete in ISO 9000. So, ISO 9000 speaks about customers. I don't like to use the word customers. I like to use in, in my, my projects, I use the word target customers because customers are all different. Some customers want, um, are overserved. Some other customers say, okay, it's normal. It's okay for me. Other customers are underserved. So what, what is good for one customer sometimes is completely bad for another customer. He, that other, uh, other segment of customers don't want. So the first point is, who is our target customers? Uh, and from there, we ask, what, like in the standard, but now it's much more um, specific. 
what is what are the, the specific requirements and needs of those uh, target customers and from there hmm, what we do is we determine what is the set of activities in, in in which our organization must be very good so that's that's from there that we uh, we decide um the, the indicators uh, remember that um, that slide about the um, about uh, blah, 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 choosing what to measure about the quality policy so your target customer is about low price is about service or customization about design or about innovation so different different priorities different indicators okay or perhaps in this i don't know but perhaps in law oil and gas industry if we consider this as a commodity so perhaps the, the low price is so quality cost and deliver would be the the, the the most relevant but i'm not I'm, I, I don't have uh, uh, any any particular experience with oil and gas industry question from rick how many processes should a typical manufacturing company have defined oh so as a uh, um i like a lot of working with the process approach for me the process approach is one of the most important tools in management I don't even if we don't care about 9001 no even for for business and for strategy execution process approach for me is wow fantastic okay very very important very very useful and so when i started using i don't know even before 9001 2000 um version i already used the process approach and i used a lot of processes when i mean a lot of processes i was using something like um, 14 13 15 processes now um of course this depends from organization to organization of course this depends in we using what some call sub processes but um i try to stay with nine ten processes okay and for me attention for me there's no process about document control there's no process about corrective actions there's no process about uh, management review no those are procedures okay procedures about things that we do to in, in our process but the, it's like mm, uh, i see an organization as a black box you know that's those boxes for putting our our glasses there okay so a black box is our company okay and we can think about quality objectives as the objectives of the black box. And then when we decide, how do, how do we work? How do we meet those quality objectives? I open the, that black box and I see the processes, okay? So processes are very, very important. So how many processes? Nine, 10 processes. Um, uh perhaps it's 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 um it's what i normally use okay hmm. question from jay should the data be standardized i have seen many times when raw numbers is presented and they are higher however the if this is standardized against number of units or another factor the data is in line with historical data okay sometimes doing this normalizing the data could be useful to, because sometimes uh, for example we may have a lot of um, we may have a lot of uh, complaints or a lot of defects but we are working much more manufacturing much more or uh, providing services much more than normal and when we do this kind of normali normalization we see that oh it's the same okay so uh, that's why I normally say that I like to see, for example, complaints as a, a kind of a, a flow. Mm -hmm. How many complaints do you have? Do you have for each 100,000 uh, euros that you, of sales, for example, or metric tons, or 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 uh, or um, cubic meters, or something like that? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Question from Mohanad. Who in organization should anal analysis and evaluate KPIs, quality manager or KPIs controller? Okay, I, I think that this, um, this uh, analysis and evaluation should be a team effort, okay? 
uh, if you as quality manager can bring managers to the, of each process to to this to doing this oh fantastic because that way you will start transforming your quality uh, management system into the business management system mm -hmm. because people will see this not uh, working for quality but working as for the for the for the processes for this it is very important that indicators the kpi what you, you call kpis are really really important kpis sometimes i see in organizations with quality systems kpis that are i, I call them childlike kpis things that are very very basic very nice to have just to show to the do the to the uh, auditor, the certification auditor, and we are always okay. Okay, but okay, that can be good for the certification audit, but uh, that's not good for the the, the the performance of the organization. Okay. Um, question from uh, Louise: Which methods does you find best, Kaizen events or DMA? I see. Okay, I don't have experience with DMIA. I see um, methods. Okay, um, so I I like the this Kaizen events. I I remember. I learned a lot with the, the Masahaki Imai. Um, there was a time in my life where I was always uh, speaking about this Kaizen uh, stuff. Yeah, but it's my my experience. Okay. Oh, question from Christopher. How do we get detailed guide of the appropriate tools for each type of challenge? Um, so uh, uh, one of the articles that I presented was um, about using the, the tools for improvement. So, and uh, for example, in the, using about the, um, the, also about the five whys. So perhaps there you can, you can um, get um, information about when to use. Okay, um, and also that uh, that those slides that slide about the improvement journey also relates in a certain way for each step what kind of uh, tools to to use. Okay. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa! Question from Javier. Uh, theory of constraint talks about throughput efficiency rather than local efficiency to success. How should you think? ISO 9001 process measurement approach could be adapted towards that without compromising compliance with the standard. Oh, Javier, I, 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 I'm, I'm so sorry, I don't have time to, to, to answer to your question about this because, you know, I will not, I will not, I will not uh, um, speak too much about this, but I must tell you that um, I use the theory of constraints uh, to develop the, to design the plans, the, the, the action plans to meet the quality objectives. Okay. Um, when I learned about this theory of constraints, for me it was, oh, it's this, because just doing the brainstorm for deciding what to do, uh, no, this is very good for, uh, for the, finding the root cause, yes, but okay, it's not so used or so, so much known in the, in the ISO 9001 uh, universe. So, okay, but I use that uh, for um, finding the, um, designing the, the improvement, um, uh, what needs to be uh, changed. It, it could be very, very useful, okay? Um, question from Amanda. If we follow the process in ISO 9001, do we really need certification? The results to our company will be the same within the organization, but do external agencies see us different without it, differently without it? So ISO 9001 is not mandatory. There's no law, I believe. Okay, maybe perhaps in some countries there's some law, uh, but uh, uh, certification is voluntary, okay? Okay, I know that in some cases, customers made it a requirement. You cannot work with us if you are not certified. But yes, I, I, for some organizations, uh, I, I must tell you, last two weeks ago, I said to an organization that I, I helped them to, uh, to certify against uh, um, 9,000, according to 9,001 and 14,001, 
and they show me, uh, tell me that they that there was a, a big change in their project, in their strategy about the, the, the future. And I said to them, okay, if you are following that track, uh, ISO 14001 is still relevant for you, but ISO 9001, mm, not, you don't need to certify, just keep the system, keep the, the things that you like in the system and continue, okay? So, um, but okay, um, some uh, uh, at least in some countries, it's it's you must be certified for for or you you must you have some kind of benefit from being certified. Uh, oh, question from Francine: How often the indicators should be reviewed? Okay, that will be that will depend on organizations. Some organizations the context changes a lot. Or, for example, if there is a kind of a strategic change in the organization, um, that way, if, if, if there's a strategic change in the organization, you, you must change indicators. Um, uh, if uh, we, um, um, what normally I, I, I ask to organize, why I recommend organizations is to uh, yearly, while preparing uh, the management review, the extraordinary management review. One of the topics is to think: this, is this is this indicator still relevant for us? Is this frequency still relevant for us? Um, okay. Um, but the most important here is um, if the, um, how is the context of the organization? Is it is it moving fast or not? If it is moving fast, perhaps we should make this question more often. Hmm? Uh, can a company use management review to drive improvement opportunities? Question from Bob. Yes, yes. Uh, it could be. Um, it could be. Um, the only the one drawback, drawback that I see is that if we normally organizations or unfortunately organizations do management review only once per year, and doing the uh, driving improvement opportunity just once per year, it's not a, not a good um, frequency. So what I would do is I would use some kind of um, uh, co concerning clause 9.1.3, some so monthly or a quarterly kind of um, review of performance and from there getting uh, the calendar based improvement and um, using uh, the, the management review with the top management present with a more strategic orientation seeing the big picture, also uh, driving improvement opportunities, okay? Okay. A question from Francine. Uh, is ISO 9001 mandatory for companies distributing medical devices? Uh, I cannot, uh, I don't know. Uh, Francine, uh, I know that uh, since the last, uh, for uh, at least in Europe, um, since uh, well May 26, uh, uh, there's something not so much about 9001, but about ISO 13485. Hmm? Uh, there's some requirements about uh, about that. Okay, but I'm not the best person to to um, to to answer that question. Okay. You can make that question to to my co I will send your question to my colleague that works with ISO 13485. Okay, well, uh, I will send your question to Christina. Okay, um, now uh, okay, uh, I have here some questions that I received from from um, in emails that I I and I prepared some slides for this. So I have a question from. Adam, what are the practical differences between monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evaluation? So, um, something like this. So, measure is determining a value. Monitor is determining the status. So, for example, you can measure the, the, the performance of a particular process. Um, every... Uh, the, the, the daily production in an organization and from there you can then uh, see a set of values and determine are we uh, con um, meeting our target our performance or are we out of 
standard performance, something like that. We analyze, examining, explaining, interpreting, and then we evaluate. We form an idea, deciding on the value of something. So they are connected in some way. So something like this, and we measure, or sometimes also we when monitor. Um, sometimes we monitor because uh, okay, and we analyze and we evaluate things like something like that. So another question is from Holleg. What evidence can be presented to the ISO auditor for improvement? So uh, types of KPIs. So and what I do is uh, I go back to this slide and I say that whenever you can evidence differences between the before and after, you can evidence improvement mm -hmm. because chronic waste uh, is lower because the frequency of particular sporadic spike is lower. So KPIs can be about defects, costs, delays, uh, success rates, uh, complaints, yields, prices, margins. Um, hmm. Okay, uh, another question is from, um, an interesting question here is from uh, Bradley. Okay. Um, is it still value aided to post monthly performance indicators even if the data collected is suspect? Meaning it meets the requirements for ISO for performance evaluation, but may not be entirely accurate of the reality of the company performance. So my answer is, uh, thank you, Bradley, for this question. You know, it took me back about 30 years to my first experience of using statistical process control in the company where I worked. I was excited and willing to apply the methodology right away, but the person I was working with asked me, do you have confidence in the measurement you are taking in the lab? Uh, are the differences due to differences in the product or the analyst or the equipment or the lab environment? So are you willing to burn your reputation by screaming that the wolf is coming and is not coming after all, or vice versa? That is when I did my first reproducibility and repeatability tests. So if the data collected have a systematic error, okay, it's something like this. So if the data collected have a systematic error, you know, you know that the error is always the same. So if you, you, you may use them in terms of trends because you can, you, when you compare different measurements, you errors, you cancel among them, okay? You compare the differences. But if they are not systematic errors, I will not use them, okay? Uh, another question is from Helmer. How do I know that my ISO 9001 is implemented effectively? So according to ISO 9001-2015, the definition of effectiveness um, is something like extent to which planned activities are realized and planned results are achieved. So if your internal audits show that your organization is acting according to plan, and if your QMS is achieving intended results, you can say that your QMS is effective. Okay. So uh, I had here more questions um, from the emails. I will I will send these questions because it's too late. Um, I will send the answers to these uh, questions uh, through email. And I have also more questions from you that are, that you are continue to 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 send me. Um, but uh, now it's it's too late, but I will answer your questions, okay? I will uh, answer your questions. Um, so, um, so I see you have a question from Adolfo, Neilud, Mario, Zaki. Okay, I will answer your questions through email during the, the weekend, okay? So, um, so uh, because then you, you will say, Oh, you are you are not controlling your time, so you are not you are not good in controlling time. You know, it's because I like this topic too much, and I lose control of things. Sorry for that. Um, so our time is up. Uh, I am sorry that there was no time to answer all of your questions, but the purpose of this webinar was to give you a general overview about measurement, analysis, and improvement. So. Um, 
um, you can ask me anything about ISO 9001 directly by email. You can also download this presentation deck from our website or take a look at video tutorials and documentation templates. We'll send you the email with all the necessary links. Uh, finally, right after this webinar, you'll see a short survey. Um, so I would kindly ask to you to spend a minute to fill it in. That will be all. Thank you for your participation and I hope you enjoyed this webinar. Have a nice day.